Hey guys, welcome back once again to Niagara Fire Corals. Today we're in the sump room. You gotta be asking yourself, why two skimmers? Stick with me. I'm gonna show you what came in this nice box here and we're gonna go through an unboxing and setup video. All right guys, so I decided to just stay in here in the sump room to unbox this for you. Uh, I'm currently mixing up my big brute can to do a water change so i just threw the lid on it we'll use that as a table but uh we're gonna open this up and have a look and uh what this is is a uh, an anali ozak 100 ozone generator so i've decided to go back to ozone again after at least a few years of not using it so we're gonna unbox, see what we get in the box here. This, this is exactly as it comes. So you obviously get your owner's manual uh, with directions and everything on how to set it up. Uh, this is directions all about your air dryer because it does come with uh, air dryer beads. So this tells you how to know when they're exhausted and how to cook them to recharge them. So I'm just gonna put these aside. So in the box here, as you already saw, you get the small air dryer. We've got, uh, looks like a pow power supply. Yep, power supply. This is gonna be ozone safe tubing. If you do not use ozone safe tubing, you're risking uh, using other types of uh, tubing, them cracking, they get very hard uh, and brittle. You, know, you have to make sure that you use proper connections and fittings that's, uh, that's good for ozone or it just, uh, it just destroys them. Comes with a couple of air stones, a round and a, a cylinder. I won't need those. Uh, this is the rest of the power supply. Another small piece of tubing. And of course, the unit itself. So this, this unit here is, is actually an all-in-one. So I already own an ORP probe. The ORP probe goes in here. You can set your, your ozone, like how many, um, milligrams per hour you want to use and then you can set uh, your set point on your ORP so if you don't want your ORP to go over say 375 you just simply set this to 375 and um, it'll peg it at that so that's not how I intend on running this unit but I'll go over that as I do the install and uh, we'll talk a little more about this as we get it get it hooked up so this is what you get in the box guys if you buy one of these units, I have not used this particular brand before, but uh, I did do a lot of reading about it and uh, I thought I'd give it a try. Okay, so just a quick rundown of kind of my idea. I haven't even checked to see if any of this will work yet, but this is what my intentions are. So I moved up my CO2 monitor, put it on top of my Kimura, and I believe that the ozone generator will fit on this shelf. And obviously I have lots of power above. That'll be no issue powering it up. And then of course, this is the reason for the second skimmer. I do not want to run ozone into my main skimmer that I've been using for many, many years. My Reef Octopus, uh, best skimmer I've ever owned hands down but i do have this ice cap k2 i purchased it for actually for another project that i'm gonna have coming up i actually gonna have a couple of projects coming up that hopefully you guys are gonna be excited about but in the meantime this ice cap it happens to be already ozone ready so this is one thing that you guys have to make sure that you pay attention to 
if you are going to use your skimmer as a ozone reactor please make sure that it is ozone ready or it's ozone safe if it's not over time the ozone can break down the acrylics of your your skimmer and destroy it so this ice cap k2 it i bought it used but i can clearly see on it where it's marked ozone has a separate uh, uh port for me to hook up where it's marked ozone so i know that this skimmer is ozone safe so this is the reason for a second skimmer in my tank i am not actually going to have that skimmer skimming i am just simply going to hook the ozone up to it and use it as a reactor so i'm going to get the ozone in place now the ozone reactor in place now and uh run run some of the wiring and i'll get things set up and then we'll get going on uh trying to set this up and get it going all right everyone so i'm back i have the ozone unit in place fit perfectly i locked out i've already run the power supply and the power up to uh one of the power bars on my apex and uh i'm ready to go to set the rest of it up i didn't want to bore you guys with that part um but i'm going to get in there now we'll hook up the airlines and we'll talk a little bit about what we're doing uh and why and how we're doing it all right so first off i'm going to get the ozone safe tubing that came with the unit I need enough of this to reach down to the skimmer where the little inlet is. And I'm just going to cut that a little shorter because it's longer than what I'm going to need. All right, so there's there's two airlets in the back. Either one of them you can hook up to, it doesn't matter. So that's my airline that's gonna feed the skimmer, the K2 ice cap. And then we have the air dryer beads. And we're gonna we're gonna hook that up. I'm just gonna throw it on top here. It's I don't even know that I'll continue using them moving forward for what I'm using this for. It doesn't have to be super efficient. So I'm not too overly concerned about it. So as I did there is I just put another piece of the ozone safe tubing on and uh, we're going to just remove this cap here. And I'll hook this up to the other inlet on the back. So we got the air, air dryer beads on there. We got the unit. It's powered by the Apex. I have it turned off at the moment. And last but not least, you got to have an ORP probe which I happen to already have one. So we'll run the ORP probe. We'll make it look nice and clean like the rest of this wall. It's perfect, nice and clean. <laughs> All right, so the ozone unit is set up. I put the probe down in there with my pH probe and everything else. So we got the ORP probe, the unit set up, goes down here, connects directly to a line straight to the venturi of this skimmer here. And uh, that'll work as our reactor. Now we're going to go through, I'll turn the unit on and we'll go through setting it up. Okay guys, so 
As you can see, I've turned the unit on. According to the ORP Pro, my ORP is 127. Now, I 100% expect that to change as that ORP was just put in the water. Uh, usually it takes a while for them to stabilize and, and kind of find their, their happy place. So I don't believe that to be a true reading right now. So we're going to go through kind of the setup. So this little switch up here, if I go to the far left, that's how much ozone that you're putting in. So as you turn this up, you know, you can put in a lot more. So in my case, I'm gonna start out very, very low. So I'm gonna start out at like just 10. I don't want to go too crazy with it at first. Uh, I just want to see how it goes. I'm using this for one reason, one reason only, and that is for just simply clearing my water, nothing else. So I'll be using 10. Next, that's your ORP setting. So if your ORP see there i went down below what my orp is at the unit just turned off so you can peg it at a certain orp so i'm going to set mine at 350. i don't want this unit coming on if my orp is is above 350. okay so now we've set how much ozone it's going to dose per hour We've said 350 is the ORP setting in which it will, it will shut off at. It won't raise it above that level. And then, of course, the last switch going over to the right. That is the actual, what it's reading as ORP of my tank currently. So it's a really simple setup, guys. It's, it's really easy to use. So this is it. This is the uh, Anali Ozak 100, and uh, we'll see how quickly it can clear up the water in my system. Not that my water was extremely hazy or say dirty, but uh, I certainly could see it looking down the length of the tank. So I thought we'd uh, get an ozone and, and get that crystal clear water that I see in so many other tanks and uh, I've always been envious of. I have run at Ozone in the past. It worked fantastic. And I did the exact same thing as I'm doing this time. I ran it at very, very low levels. So that's why I don't need a huge unit, even though I have 450 gallons of water. I ran it at very, very low levels. And um, I ran it just enough to clear my water and nothing more. So that's what I'm going to do again today with this unit starting tonight. And uh, we'll see what the results are in a few days. Now, I will say that, you know, a lot of people will put carbon on top of the skimmer, uh, things like that, worried about the ozone getting into the air. Yes, ozone is not good for humans to breathe. But with how little that I am running, I am not concerned about it as well. I am setting this unit through my apex to only come on between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. when nobody will be down here in the basement in the sump room. So I'm not concerned about it. Uh, the half-life of ozone is very, very short. It's only about 20 minutes and ozone is known to be heavy. So the ozone would stay down here, wouldn't go up to you know where we're sleeping in bedrooms and, and things like that. Aside from that, I'm usually, with the exception of maybe the very, very odd time, I am not down here, nor is anyone else, between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning. So I have no concerns about people being down here and breathing this ozone when it's running. All right, guys, so here's the tank currently.
and uh, we'll see. We'll see if it gets clearer. It's not that it's super dirty or hazy, but if you're here in person, you can actually see it a lot more than what the camera's picking up. It's definitely hazy. I know I can see through the entire length, but I want to get that water that is absolutely crystal clear where it doesn't even look like water is in the tank. So that's what we're hoping to get here. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'll take, I'm gonna take it nice and slow. I don't want a chance doing any damage to anything. So that's why we're only starting out at 10 milligrams an hour. But uh, you know, as things go along, I will slowly increase that till I see the results that I wanna see. All right, guys, so the setup here is pretty well done. I just wanted to show you guys one more thing that I did. Kind of adds a little bit of redundancy. This skimmer here, we all know that skimmers have a tendency to just take off and overflow. Now, I have this skimmer set so it pretty well doesn't even skim. So hopefully that won't happen. But there is always the case that it could. So... What I don't want is that ozone generator running if the skimmer is not. So what I did to correct that in case it happens is the same thing I did on my, my other skimmer. You can see I put a float switch into the lid. So if the fluid was to fill the cup, of course it'll push the float switch up, which would shut my skimmer off because I don't want it overflowing all over and making a mess in the room. But as you can see, it also shut off the ozone generator, right? I let that float switch down. So in other words, I empty the cup and it comes back on. Okay, float switch up, cups full, skimmers off, so is the ozone generator. Real simple thing to do with a breakout box and a float switch. Uh, I explained it in a previous video. Uh, if you guys have any questions about that, just drop it in the comments below. I'll try and help anybody with uh, kind of the code you write for that, but it's real simple. It's the same exact setup that I did on my main skimmer because, you know, your skimmer works so hard to fill your, your cup with organics that it's been pulling out of your tank. Last thing you want is for it to go crazy and start blowing everything out of the top and putting it all back in your tank again. So if that happens with either one of these skimmers now, as soon as it fills up, it shuts the skimmer off and then it doesn't overflow all that, that stuff back into the system. All right, guys, so that's pretty well it for this. Uh, we'll see how this uh, produces in uh, the coming days and weeks. I will update you guys as we go we'll see what that orp does again i don't think that that's an accurate reading uh, i know that orp probes can take a couple of days to settle in but uh we'll see what happens with it but for now guys that's it and uh, i appreciate each and every one of you guys and until the next time make sure you take care and happy reefing